Well, good morning. We uh, are here on the Henry's Fork of the Snake River, and uh, we'll be fishing the South Fork of the Snake River also, but we're going to start here on the Henry's Fork. And what we're hunting for today is a blue wing olive hatch. Our program today is about blue wing olives, and we'll try to share with you as many things as we can about fishing a blue wing olive. The date is November the 7th. And as you can see, we had a pretty good little snowstorm last night. But don't ever let a snowstorm get in the way of your blue wing olive fishing. Many times before, I've seen numerous hatches and very dense hatches in the middle of a snowstorm. The snow has passed. We've got a little breeze coming up. And uh, we'll be fishing the Henry's Fork today. And then we'll be moving over to the South Fork tomorrow and be fishing it. Cuddies uh, for tomorrow, rainbows for today. So we're going to go chase fish with you. Blueing olives are the target. Before we get started fishing today, I'd like to share with you a little bit about some of the patterns it is that we use. To start with, we'll share with you a, a real standard in our blueing olive fishing, and it is what's called a single upright wing. It's not a really effective fly for flat surface type of fishing, but it's very eff effective in the riffle. The next bug is what we call a comparadon. It is designed specifically to fish for that hatch that is really fast, fast water and a real quick riffle. You can also, before the hatch start, you can search with this bug and actually fish, hook fish blindly in riffle and along the edges with this beautiful little comparadon. The next bug you're looking at is what we call a no hackle. All of these bugs are tied in 20s, 22s, and 18s. The no hackle is probably the most perfect bug ever designed to fish a flat surface when the adult bugs are on the surface. This is what's called a no hackle. The next bug that you're looking at here is what we call a colored emerger. You can see the striated body on it. It looks identical to a blue wing olive. And it is meant to suspend just below the surface as that bug is hatching and emerging. This is a wonderful pattern for slick surface. It may be the most effective pattern that we fish for a slick surface. The next bug you see on the screen is what's called a hatching blue wing olive. And you may get to think that, wow, why would you need all of the different varieties of blue wing olives? And I will tell you from experience, there will be days that it will be the only thing that a fish will eat. They will target on one of three stages of the hatch and they'll stick with it and they'll eat the bug. The next bug you're looking at on the screen is a Betis soft tackle. We love this bug. Most people fish it wet and sink it underneath the surface. We like to gink this bug and fish it in really, really slow water or fish it in a little back eddy. An extremely effective pattern when it's used like that. Lays low in the surface film. Wonderful bug to catch a lot of fish. Later on in the hatches, you'll find oftentimes that the fish will then begin to feed, feed on what would be the spent spinner variety of the blue wing olive. And what you're looking at here is a beautiful little spent spinner. The final bug I want to show you is what's called a cadage. A cadage is not a blue wing olive at all, but at the same time that the blue wing olives are hatching, oftentimes you'll get a mix in there of, of midges. So you got to be able to switch off on that. One of the really, really popular bugs and one of the most effective midges I've ever fished is a cadage. As we were floating down the Henry's Fork in the early afternoon, we spotted the first large group of feeding fish. They were on a riffle on a corner against a big moss bed. Now, you'll see now as we are actually setting up to fish to this group of fish. You can see that I'm walking up the edge of the river. I'm as close to the bank as I can possibly be because the one thing about winter fish, they are extremely sensitive to any movement that you might make and you want to keep a big distance between feeding fish and you. So now we are moving up to the top of that group of fish and setting up to deliver a fly downhill. I can't do this any better. 
Well, what do you know? Finally got a hook in one. Finally got a hook in one. That's a rainbow. It's kind of a cut bow. Beautiful fish, though. Good. Baseball bat right down. I didn't see it that time. There he was. There he was. Yeah, we, we knocked down the bottom end of him, Joseph. And then I had I had four takes right in a row and hooked the fish every time and didn't get him in. Was a nicer fish. <laughs> mm -hmm. Little dark rainbow. No, no, no. Cut it. That's pretty nice fish there. That pretty nice fish right there. Yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? <laughs> you downed them off. Pretty nice rainbow right there. Get out of that mosh. Oh, yeah, he's a pretty big guy. Big rainbow. Heavy. Get all mossed up there, mister. Do your, do your thing. Do your thing. What a toad. There he is. What's that? Yeah. What was what? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Heavy. Like quick. <laughs> Good job, Jeffrey. <laughs> That's a nice fish, really. Okay. After we had worked over this group of fish uh, below the moss line in the riffle, we moved the boat downstream and hunted heads as we went. In the center of the river, about a mile down below, we recognized a fairly good-sized group of fish in the middle of the river. We pulled the boat over on the edge and prepared to go fish the fish in the middle of the river. We then recognized a fish feed down below us as we were getting out of the boat. From here, what I'd like to, to extract from this, we ending, end up landing a fairly big fish here. We're using a size 22 no hackle, and this is a fairly sizable fish. One thing that you could pick up out of the process of landing this fish is some ideas about how to land a big fish on a teeny tiny fly. Let's proceed. There he is, down river a little bit. Yep, that's on you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a big fish. <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta love it. That's big 
fish. That's a real big. Salt. That's a real big fish. We're gonna chase him. Yeah, there's a big old scum sucker laying in here. He's a large fish. Oh, geez, it's a brownie. You're a big brownie. <laughs> you getting that? It's gum sucking brownie. He's a big old brownie. Head up, Brownie. Get your head up, Brownie. Jay's like a shark, Jeffrey. Uh -huh. That was, and we just parked in the perfect spot. That's a nice fish. Got a tail on him about six inches wide. Okay, Joseph, we're making some we're making some ground on him. And he's above us, you gotta like it. Coming up. Big brownie. Oh shit. How big is that fish, Joseph? Probably 21. 20 or 21. Yeah, and that's a bend him. in him. Let's do a release on this guy. Looking right at you, Jeffrey. Okay. Nye on him. Nye on him. Did you ever wonder what old dry fly fishermen do in the evening after they're done fishing for a day? Well, let me take you for a trip to the basement and I'll show you exactly what it is that we do. This is Joe Bear down in his tying du dungeon. And he's gonna tie a little no hackle that we use a ton, little blue wing olive, and it is an awesome tie. So let's go to the basement now. We'll take a peek at a little tie on a blue wing olive no hackle. Let's see this. Uh -huh. Hi, Joe. So all I do is I don't use that wing, that feather there. That's junk. Yes, right. It is. I get rid of that. Uh -huh. and so oh, all I okay. do is I got all my wings. Uh -huh. So I take that. This isn't a very good pair. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So uh -huh. see, that's what you never know what you're going to get. But uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would take that one there uh -huh. and this one. Yes. And then I just go like this. So I know they're my match. And so then I just go down here again. I cut this one out. And I cut this one out, huh? and this is my match right here. I just keep lining them up. Uh -huh. Those oh. are junk. Yo, not too good, huh? No, see, they're all messed oh, up. Oh, man, they are. Uh, uh, teal in here, actually, that what, I got from a guy. What, what, when the duck feathers come dollars. in. Now, see, what I usually do is I'll get pull them out, and I'll look at them like this, and see, I can see. That's pretty good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, I shouldn't even have messed with that. I'll just throw that aside and use it for something else, maybe like uprights or whatever. Uh -huh. Right. But see, I'll just get rid of that uh -huh. one there. And then I'll just do this. Now these will be a lot better, I can tell already. Mm. Like this. That's See, I can take my hand and I can f get those to go back Oh yeah, together. yeah, that's that's So that's good. pretty good, I can use that. Uh -huh. and I'll just put this here and uh -huh. Uh -huh. now this one's a little easier. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So you just never know what, but oh, I could mm -hmm. probably still get that to work. Mm -hmm. Lay that there, and I just do it again. That's all I'm doing. So I got match sets from the same bird. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you grab towards the middle? I don't. See, I just go down. You only want to use it four or five. 
<laughs> I don't. <laughs> I mean, now see these these teal wings. Uh, these are perfect for bluing olives. Oh, I right bet. There. Oh That's yeah. That's the perfect color, and they're smaller. See how they're oh, smaller? Yeah. If I knew yeah. that, I threw out a bunch. I got you from, can use just. I, I mean, got mallard, from my bed. mallards are the primo because they're nice and big. <laughs> yeah. But see, these are all teal. These are all oh, teal, and that's a perfect yeah. color for. Oh, it for is. Those dollars. darker colors are. And if I can get some that'll better. work. Wow. That'll work. Look at that. And if somebody just came in here and just shuffled that pile, oh, how, it's all how, messed up. How bad would that? How bad would that hurt? Oh, it hurt bad because when you're doing no hack, because you don't get the same width, the same curvature on each side. Right. And you one might be a little narrower or a little. Mm -hmm. But those are perfectly matched. But once I get over there, if what I'm are the tie, chances you can tell me a blue wing olive if, right now? Yeah, let's, gonna, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. If okay. I'm going to tie, you do that. Keep going. Keep going. I don't know. I don't have my glasses on, so I don't see very good up close. But if I was going to tie, okay, hold it, Joe. Hold it. Now you've showed us. You've shown us how it is that you organize on the table. Now, if you were just going to take pick up each of these feathers. Pick up two feathers and then just tie a no hackle uh, from the organization that you've placed on well, the table. Well, I just go like this. I just if I'm gonna, I grab like five at a time. I just grab three here like that. Okay. And I take them over to that table, of course, and I'd lay them here. Okay. And I grab three here because those are my matches, and I okay. just lay them like this, and then I. Okay. Get them over there, and then what I do is I take them here. And if I'm going to tie some little blue wings, so what I'll do is grab this one and this one because I know that's what I've got. And I'll just inspect the wing. Uh -huh. You know, so see now, see I'm already messed up. It's this one right here. So see that's a little messed up there. I don't know. See, I don't even know if I would use that one. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, when I was doing it over here, I kind of looked at yeah. it. Yeah. Well, maybe. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That's still. It's, but it's I get it to work. But what I do is go up here. I get this one off. Pull that off. Go up here. I pull this off. So I'm at the right area of the wing on yeah. each wing. Uh huh. And then what I do is I'd have these back here a little bit more. Uh huh. And then I go. I'm going to do some 22. So I'd get my wing there. Get my wing here. That's my match set right there. So I take that match set and I put it like that. Okay. And I do the same thing. I don't want to go up to it. Can't get up in here because right, it won't right. work. You don't uh -huh. stay in here. So I take that. These aren't very good. I take this. So what I do is I'm just lining my wings up here. Right, right, right. Uh huh. So if I know I'm tying a bunch of blue wings for DFI. So how many so how many of those would you stack in advance before you began to tie? As Joe? many as I could fit at the top of that table to tie twenty dozen. So I'd have that two, table right I'd have there. Two hundred sets of wings lined up like this. Right. And then what I'd do is get all those done uh -huh, uh -huh. and then I'd start tying. You kind of laid you've laid out two now. And if you were commercially tying, I don't want any instruction just tie a bug just like you were going to sit at the table and tie at regular no. pace, regular speed. That's no big deal. I'll just get real close here. Okay, here we go. Do one that's a little bit better here. Let's get it right there. Okay, so I'll we'll start right there. I like to trim that end just so the fibers will separate a little bit more. That's about right. There we go. Now this wing closest to me is a little narrower and that's what I'm going to work with. So I'll trim this wing down to size. Alright. Right there. Now the key is, got to get that first movement right or you're not going to get it right. 
<laughs> Jeez. Okay. okay. No one's ever experienced that before with the no haggle. <laughs> <laughs> that first rap could be a doozy. Now, see here, I don't even need to use my thread. I'll just use my fingers. There we go. It's a little bit better. Like I say, I can't see what the hell I'm doing here. There we go. I'll be okay. There, that's going to be just dry right there. Once I start tying, I mean, you just, Oh, yeah, you get in a rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, that looks pretty damn yeah, good. Yeah, there we go. It? See, now okay. sometimes that wing will end up, and so I'll just take my scissors and pull it out to the side a little bit more. So. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's nice, man. Still, it's not quite right. See that wings up a little bit. You zoomed on that thing, Jeffrey. It'll still fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so we'll take these because they'll work tomorrow for Rando. <laughs> oh hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, let's go have a little uh, chili beans. How about that? If you have ever fished the winter before, you know that those patterns in winter are very, very specific. We've designed a little pack, a small pack, of seven different varieties of bugs. Those bugs are the seven top bugs that we fish in winter. It is included in what's called our winter pack. Here are the bugs. Now, if you get really serious about fishing the winter, we also sell a custom designed box. It's six dozen flies, and everything in that box is designed specifically for winter fishing. This is our miracle box. Before we start fishing the South Fork of the Snake River, you'll recognize as we start to fish that we're delivering the fly in two different directions. We'll be serving it upstream and delivering it to fish above us and fish below us also. Keep one thing in mind, in the winter time especially, your best targets would always be served below you. That way your fly is delivered straight down the throat of the fish and he sees nothing. None of your line, none of your tippet, none of those things. Now, if you have to cast upstream, that's okay too. You'll catch a lot of fish fishing upstream also. But the thing you want to remember is always go right side, left side. Do not make a cast that puts your line directly over a feeding fish. So, move in the water, go right or go left, but make sure that there is a keen angle that only puts your fly over the top of the fish. Preferably, you want the fish below you and serving directly to the nose of the fish. Now we'll pick up the fishing on the South Fork of the Snake River. There he is. Hey, that's a wild cutty right there. Jeez. 
She's wild cutty, Jeffrey. Wild cutty. This thing would be insane in another hour. Yeah, I get you in here in that slack water and then I got you. Jeez. Jeez, Jeffrey, that's a pretty big fish. Take a look at that puppy. Look at that baby. Nice, nice, nice. No hackle. Starting to form up in there. It's also the toughest water to get them to eat, too. Oh, there he is. That's a nice fish there, too. Jeez. How fast is he going to come at me is a question. It's another big old damn cutty. No, it's a rainbow. Big old heavy rainbow. Look at that son of a gun. Ready? They're still really hesitant on this no-hackle right now. Got him? Nope. Oh, hell. Is he pretty nice, Joseph? That looks like a pretty nice fish. Well, let's just double up for the first time today. How about it? Be done if you're going to be that way. If you're going to be that way, you'll be that way. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's caught around my finger. Oh, gee. There you go. <laughs> you got to be kidding. <laughs> it just, uh, that's a pretty big fish right there, Jeffrey. Ah, oh, it's a blueing olive day. A little snow coming down. A little sleet coming down. little bit too far but that's all right just keep an eye right in that zone it's the perfect angle to hit them from oh 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 my <laughs> well so much for that talk about you know not taking it on the swing That was a nice fish. It's a whitey though. At least it looked like a whitey. No, nah, that is not a whitey. He's not fighting like a whitey. Oh, that's a nice fish. Rainbow. Beautiful rainbow. Look at the colors in that dude. Look at him, mad pretty. Ready? Yeah. Got a picture of him? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> Coming at you faster than you. <laughs> oh, beautiful little fish. Oh, well. They're not. Not at all. There's another fish, Jeffrey. Here you go. Jeez. That was not my fly. That was. Mm -hmm. You're fishing like a rookie, mister. I am. Well, there was about three or four bugs right there that... Jeez. You've got to be kidding me. Look where that line is. That's backing right there almost. What the hell have we got on, Jeffrey? 
Got him. Got him. <laughs> Were you on the move? Mm hmm. Well, it's all right. Pasty. Get him in here in this soft water. We stand a chance at him, Jeffrey. Damn. That's a pretty good fish. What the hell's my net? Pretty heavy. Well, let's take a look at you then. Ready, Jeffrey? Picante! Oh, we got the Joey dance again. Hey, hey, hey! Okay. By golly. Damn, Joseph, you're still fighting that fish? Either that or you got him foul hook, Joseph. I foul hooked a couple of fish. Let's photo that one, Joey. There we go. First cast with the with the uh, colored emerger. Well, that's a nice fish, Joseph. There he is. That was a nice take right there. Yeah, but I think it's a whitey. We're just in a we're just in a vein of whiteys. Yeah, you're a whitey. But you're a pretty nice whitey. He's a feisty whitey too. You know, the whiteys aren't as heavy as they could be. Of course, with the mouth that small, life would be tough. It's going to put it right over the top of him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you'd, I saw that fish feed right before. I was say, that's be my bug. <laughs> that's a whitey. I know a whitey. When I see a whitey, I know a whitey. Okay, so you might have been right about that thing about the whitey. Just one second. Ready? Lift him up. Okay. See ya. We want to be ya. We gotta store him out now. In our fly tying segment today, we'd like to share with you a recipe that ties what we call a single upright wing blue wing olive. This is one of the great patterns of all time. It can be fished very effectively in fast moving water. And there's just something about this bug on the surface. If you land it in a group of blue wing olives floating the surface, you better keep your eye right on the bug because you won't be able to recognize it from the real bug to your bug. So let's tie a single upright wing blue wing olive. So uh, let's tie a single upright wing blue wing olive. We'll start by putting the thread right at the eye of the hook and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five and cinch that down right there. This tie is based all about mounting a wing. The wing on this particular tie is done with what we call duck quill. This is a piece of duck quill right here and you can see the notches that we have cut. Each one of those notches would represent a wing. Now, I'm gonna take a cut from the, from the wing and I'm gonna go ahead and do the most important thing about tying this fly just because it comes first and that is mounting the wing. In order to mount the wing properly, you must have a hold on the feather and place the feather exactly over the top of the hook, just like this between your fingers. Now, I'm gonna take the thread and I'm gonna throw it up around my fingers. I'm gonna squeeze real tight. 
I'm going to squeeze down on the, on the duck feather and I'm going to pull straight down. Now watch the movement in the feather as I secure it into place. When I feel the, when I feel the thread actually touch the metal, I'm going to shake it or secure it nice and tight. I'm going to raise up and I'm going to go one, two, three, really nice and tight. And I'm just going to let the thread rest now behind the feather. I get a hold of the feather here. I lift up on the thread and drop it across the hook and down through the little fan shape. Now you can see that the feather has raised upright. I'm going to stroke it and I'm going to pull it exactly into place now. So next step in the process, this is a little piece of what's called Coke de Leon. It is a wonderful, wonderful tailing fiber because it's variegated. So I'm going to line up a little piece of, of Coke de Leon and we're going to mount that as the tail. Make sure now when you pull, your fibers on the tailing should look exactly like this. See how straight the fibers are? If they're straight on the bottom, they'll be perfectly straight on the end. I'll move that away. We'll collapse the, the tailing material. I'll hold it on the very end and I'll slip it right in here, right on that transition line from the wing onto the abdomen. I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to roll the thread back in a nice level and building a little bit of taper to the body to about right there. Now I'm going to move the thread now and this is a thread body fly. The idea here is, is we want to keep it as small and concise as we possibly can. Now my thread is right, be, right uh, behind the, the wing and I'm going to move in now and secure heckle fiber and you can use two different kinds. Dark blue dun solid or dark blue dun dyed grizzly or grizzly dyed dark blue dun. In this case we're using dyed fiber. So I'm going to take the hackle, I'll slide it right in at the base, right behind the wing, and I'm going to secure the hackle just like this. I do that with a little piece of blue wing olive dub. I'm going to take the dub and I'm going to secure it right here on the thread and give it a nice little roll slip it up into place and what we'll do here is, as you can see the dub hanging and I'm going to now mount the dub around the thorax and build it up as a seat for the hackle to be secured. So to start with my first turn is actually under the hackle just like this and behind just about like this. Now you can see that we have a little ball that we've created right there and now we're going to wrap the hackle inside the ball. It'll be one turn in front of or in back of the wing and two turns behind. We'll do the final shaping of the wing as we do this also. At this point the hackle is secured and all we have to do now is just make a nice clean little head and we've completed the construction of the fly and there'll be a little bit of finishing touches that we need to do. And we now, in essence, have created a single upright wing mayfly. There'll be a little hand carving to the wing here and we'll try to show you exactly how it is that you carve out the wing into the perfect shape of a mayfly wing. So I'm going to take it off of the vise at this time. We'll hand hold the fly and we'll do the finish of the trim. Now what you're, we're doing is you're looking at the fly. I've got it in heckle pliers and I'm holding the wing exactly at this angle. The critical issue here is do not make any cuts until you have secured the scissors on exactly the line in which you want to cut. I'm going to lay the scissors flat down on my hand just like this. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to aim and I'm going to shoot. My first cut looks just exactly like this. I'll do a little bit of a trim here out on the end to make sure that we got a nice straight line. And the first cut looks exactly like this. 
I'm now going to turn the fly the opposite direction to where the little peak is sticking straight up. And again, I'm going to secure the scissors. I'm going to aim, making sure the angle that I'm shooting, and I'm going to clip. Now we've made two clips, and we're starting to get the shape that we're looking for on a blue wing olive wing. I'm going to come in now, and I've got two edges I've got to cut. I want to cut here, about like this, and round this. And I've got one more little angle here that I need to cut. I'm going to secure the scissors. I'm going to go right around the top, just like this. And I'm going to round this all the way. And all of you have seen a mayfly on the surface of the water. And you recognize this wing as looking exactly like that. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go underneath the hackle and I'm going to trim out the bottom. It is very essential for this tie to be balanced. You need a roll point so when it hits the water it will continuously roll to where it floats on the water just exactly like this. You can ensure that most of the time by doing a little hackle clip on the bottom side. So I'll turn the fly this way, I'll aim at it and look at it I want to take the very bottom out in a slot, right straight down the eye, right straight under the hook, just like this. Now what I've created is a little V just underneath the fly. So I've created my balance point, and you can look now from an angle, you can see that there is just a clean blade on the wing. But when I turn it sideways, you can see a big ballooned wing just exactly like a mayfly wing. This guy looks exactly like a mayfly when it sits on the water. Now you can check your balance point by simply dropping the fly on the table like this. Notice how the fly rolls to the perfect position. The mayfly is basically sitting on the table exactly the way you want it to address on the surface of the water. The way that you do that is making a perfectly balanced fly and that fly will always roll to the position of the wing up and the hook down. This is a finished blue wing olive single upright wing. What you're looking at ahead of you is a line of hatch water. If you look very closely at the surface, you'll see no fish feeding there. Don't let that ever deter you as a dry fly fisherman. You can fish through waters exactly like this and throw the fly where you know he lives. And the, if you have the right fly, he'll come and visit you at the surface, even outside the hatch. We're starting a little early today. The hatch hasn't begun, but we're gonna try to dredge some fish up from the bottom before the hatch begins. By golly, he did eat it, Jeffrey. Yeah, pretty nice fish. That's right. Amazing what comes lurking on a searcher bug. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Pretty damn heavy. Check him out. He might even be more than that. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. There he was. <laughs> they will take the comparative. 
Oh, that's perfect. Got me down on my reel. <laughs> it's the way these things happen. Size 20 hooks don't do you a lot of good, Jeffrey. They don't take a very big bite, especially when the barb is pinched. Okay, we're gonna get a look at this son of a gun here in just a minute. Here it comes. Zoom on that a bit. Gorgeous big old rainbow. How much will a size 20 hook hold, Jeffrey? It's a question. How much does a size 20 hook hold? Jeez. Look at the colors. It's just a gorgeous darn fish. Check them out. Check them out. Oh, that's just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous fish. It's going to be a pretty release, too. And all we're doing now is just covering the surface of the water, seeing in what lane maybe a fish might be willing to come up and eat the bug. That's the whole idea behind searcher fishing. You're serving it to holding water, hoping a fish comes up and eats. Simple principle. You know, there's this beautiful little chop riffle right out there. There he is. Oh, wow. You son of a gun. That's a feisty little guy. <laughs> That's a feisty guy. That was the one we were looking for, Jeffrey. That is a big fish. Hey, I like you over here. He is a big old red-sided son of a gun. The bug we're using to search our fish here this afternoon is what's called a, which is what's called a comparadon. And you can see it right there in the side of the fish's mouth here. And you can see the beautiful winter colors. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous big fish. There he is. <laughs> That's a big old fish, dude. <laughs> I actually saw that fish under the water. He wasn't feeding or anything. I could just see him. Don't do that. Get down there with freaking boulders and then we'll have a problem. I got a lot of photos of him. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. He said that sucked. He said that was one of the worst experiences of my life. To finish our program today, we'd like to introduce you to a music video called Black Gold. It comes from an album of 10 music videos called Songs of the Dry Fly. So enjoy the video, and I just want to take a second to thank you for your time and viewing our program today.